Hey there, how's it going? I really like to watch other people document their process of making stuff. I started doing this myself a while back because I thought it would be fun, and it would also be great to have videos later to look back on so I can see my progress. There's a common trend on YouTube of doing challenges with whatever medium you're making things in. It's a way of having fun and doing the thing you love with less stress because it's supposed to be too hard. The end result is more about what it took to get to the final product, more so than the final product itself. If you've seen some of my other videos, you may know that I'm a huge fan of game jams, which are basically organized game dev challenges. I was bored the other night and wanted to make something, but it was already like 10.30 p.m. and I didn't really want to get too involved in any of my current projects. I've been kicking around the idea of doing the whole make a game in an hour challenge that I've seen other people do. It just sounded fun. And I figured 11 to midnight would probably be perfect for that. I have the time, I might as well. To throw myself another curveball, I decided I would jump on itch and find a free small asset pack that I could use to guide the direction of what I make. After a quick scroll through the new and popular section, I ended up picking the simple platformer tile set 8x8 and 16x16, which was made by Alfred Sheep. It had all the elements for a cute little puzzle platformer, and not too many assets so I hopefully won't get overwhelmed. Now I've made my fair share of platformers, so I picked it, and at the stroke of 11, I was off. I created a new retro style project in Construct, and started by adding the player art sprite to see what animations I had. With this little guy, it looks like we have a walk cycle with the arms up as well as down. I figured I could reuse the first frame for the idle as well as the jump. Although looking at it while editing, I should have used the first frame for the idle, the second for the jump, and the third for the fall. That was probably the intent of the creator that I just overlooked in my rush to import the sprites. After setting up the player art, I also added the player box which does all the actual movement. I give the player box the built-in platform behavior that's part of Construct, and I'll tweak the settings as I move along. I keep the actual hitbox that moves separate from the art because usually I like to try and do a lot of squashing and stretching of my player. That ended up not mattering much here because an hour is a really short amount of time. I mean, I knew it was going to be quick, but it really sneaks up on you. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Next up was the ground because what good is a player if all they do is fall off screen? I don't use 9 patches often, but every time I do I always think I should use these more. They're really easy and versatile, and they allow you to scale out simple designs like this into any size you need. With the player and ground all set, I followed my usual platformer routine and started adding a lerping camera. Lerp is short for linear interpolation. I'm not gonna lie and tell you I know how this all works. All I know is I call it and I feed it three parameters. The camera's position, the player box's position, and the speed I want multiplied by delta time. It makes for a nice smooth camera, although I do find that on the small retro projects, it tends to jitter a little bit because it's moving such small amounts. I haven't actually booted up a retro style project in Construct in a while, and this is actually one of the reasons why, and I completely forgot when I started this. At this point, I was feeling good. It's only been 10 minutes and I already have a player in and moving. Next, I added in the background elements, and instead of moving on and continuing to make progress like I should have, I went back to fidget with the camera some more because apparently spending another 5 minutes to make the camera look ahead was more important at this stage for some reason in my brain. This is an aspect of doing these kind of challenges that I really like. Because I have to go back and analyze the footage to make this video, I get to see where I wasted time and energy. And looking back with hindsight it's even worse because I know I'm going to be disabling all this work I'm doing right here because it starts giving me issues and I didn't have time to mess with it. 20 minutes in and I'm back on track setting up controls and animations for the player. I added in the player sprite animations before but I didn't actually set them up to run. I first need to add a couple of instance variables to the player sprite to keep track of the two animation states. The player will either be in the walk or idle animation. Again, the idle is also used for the jump, and the player can either have its hands up or down. It's at this point that I start to realize that I'm almost 30 minutes in, and I mostly just have a fancier version of what I had at 5. It's time to start making a game happen. I spend some time looking at the sprite sheet, and I realize that at most, I'm going to be able to have the player pick up a key and go to the door. I was planning on a puzzle platformer, but it looks like the puzzle needs to be cut for time. So we're going vanilla basic platformer. I started to lay out a level to get a feeling for how difficult it would be and how long it would take. Adding in another platform that the player can jump through, a death plane that will reset the level when the player falls, the exit door, and the key the player needs to pick up. With 20 minutes left on the clock, I was able to make it through the level and pick up the key. I was hoping to do something other than you pick up the key, the door opens automatically, but I was really worried about time at this point, so that's exactly what I did. But to show that to the player, I did make sure that on the first level, they had to pass the door to pick up the key. That way they could see the association between picking up the key and the door opening. And now with the core mechanics finally working, I had 10 minutes left and I need to make some levels. Good platforming levels take time and attention to put together. 
These are not good platforming levels. These were thrown together with half the time I had left. Now, with about five minutes left and no hope of a menu, I made level five the windscreen and made it so that when you go into the door on that level, you just go back to level one and start over. Then I think, well, I have five minutes left. Let's see if I can make a few more levels. To make all the level transitions easier, I made level five the end, so I had to do some layout renaming. I was already really flustered at this point because of the limited time left, and my brain just refused to figure out how to change these numbers around to make it work. So I just gave up and tried to make sure that I renamed everything back correctly. And wouldn't you know it, I didn't realize until I was watching this back to edit, I renamed a layout wrong somewhere in the middle of all of it, and because of that, one of the four levels I made didn't even show up in the game. Since numbers were a bit too hard for my brain at this stage, I decided I would use my last couple of minutes to add some sound effects. I bought an audio humble bundle a while back with a ton of sound effect and music packs, so I pulled the retro platformer sound effects out of that. I was only able to add sounds for the jump, collecting the key, getting to the door, and dying. I got those in the best I could, and at midnight, this was the final result. I was able to get in the bare minimum of a platformer. It can move, it can jump. And when I finally beat this masterpiece of a game, I received my victory message, picked up the key, entered the door, and was brought right back to the final stage because I messed up the level order worse than I thought when my brain just completely forgot how to numbers. Overall, this was a really fun, quick challenge that I'm definitely gonna do again. Spoiler, I did it again the next night. I'll have a video about that soon. I am curious how it would differ using simple shapes instead of an asset pack. I definitely feel that taking the time to import the sprites and animations affected how much progress I was able to make. I really like using asset packs as a challenge to make you do something different, but I don't think I would use it in one this short again. It just takes too long to set up the assets when you only have an hour. Unfortunately, I don't feel that I did this asset pack justice. I might try and do something else with it in the future. Thank you to Alfred Cheap for making this super cute asset pack, and I'm sorry what I made wasn't cooler. If you want to try the same challenge for yourself, or if you just want to make something adorable, the link to the itch page is in the description. So that was my experience trying to crank out a game in an hour. I hope you enjoyed. I started a second itch page because I plan on doing more of these challenge games, and I know they're not going to be very good, so I don't really want them on the same page as my actual polished games. The games won't be great, but I hope they'll be a fun experience along with the videos I make to go with them. I had a lot of fun with this, and I'm definitely going to be doing more of these in the future. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below, message me on Twitter, or join the Discord. You can check out other games I've put a little more time into at vimlark.itch.io. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.